Welcome to my screencast, Coding Java Properties. If you're coding constants or strings in your source code, then you should likely be putting this data in a Java Properties file. We can quickly understand what a property is by looking at the file they are stored in. These are text files that may have one or more lines of text each line consists of a key string at the beginning, followed by an equal symbol, and then the matching value string. The key string can be any text with six main exceptions. The key should not contain an equals, a colon, a space, or a tab. The reason for this is that each of these four characters can be used as the separator between a key and a value. Two other characters need special handling. These are the pound symbol and the exclamation mark. These two indicate a comment and should not be in the key. If you are creating the properties by hand, then you can use these six characters in the key if you precede them with the escape character, the backslash. Creating a properties file in code will automatically escape these six characters if used. My advice, though, is to avoid using these six characters in the key value. Optionally, you can use an XML file for your properties file. Due to the fact that the key is an attribute, you can use any of the special characters without escaping them. The value string can be any text, including the space, from the six special characters. To use any of the remaining five special characters, they must be preceded by the escape character, the backslash. Values created in code are automatically escaped. In an XML file, you do not escape the special characters. To work with properties in your code, you should create a bean class that matches the data that you plan to store in the properties file. Here I have a male config bean class with three fields, a default constructor, a non-default constructor, and the setters and getters. The next class is the properties manager. I have five methods in this class to work with the male config bean. The first two read and write properties to a plain text file. The method load text properties takes as parameters the path to an existing properties file and the name of the file without an extension. It returns an instance of the mail config bean. The code begins by instantiating a new properties object. The next line uses the static get method of paths to construct a new I.O. path object. Here we are adding the extension dot properties to the file name. This is a convention and not a rule for properties files. However, I recommend following the convention. A mail config object is instantiated. Before we try and read the file, we check if it exists. If it does not, then the default instance of the mail config bean will be returned. Otherwise, we create an input stream object using the static new input stream method from the path object. The code is in a try with resources block so that the input stream is automatically closed when the processing of the properties file is complete. The next line calls upon the property object's load method that will use the input stream to read the file. There is a possibility of the checked exception, IO exception, happening here. I am throwing this exception to whomever is calling this method by using the throws clause in the method signature. In the next three lines, I'm getting the name properties from the property object and setting it into the mail config bean. Finally, we return an instance of the mail config bean. To write to a properties file, I have the method writeTextProperties that takes the path, file name, 
and an instance of the mail config bean as parameters. A properties object is created. We then set the named properties in the property object with what we get from the mail config bean. Now we can create our path object. We create an output stream object in a try with resources block based on the path object. We pass the output stream to the properties object's store method. The additional string in the parameters for store will become a comment at the beginning of the file. The date and time will also be automatically added to the beginning of the properties file. The potential IO exception is thrown to the method's caller just like we did in the load text properties method. The next two methods, load XML properties and write XML properties, are almost identical to the first two methods except for the method name to load and store. To read, we use load from XML instead of load, and to write, we use store to XML instead of store. Normally, properties files are stored separate from the jar file that a program is distributed in. When a program needs configuration data, such as email server credentials, and fails to find a properties file on the user's file system, it should ask the user for this data and save it to a new properties file so it's available the next time the program runs. The last method in my class represents a special case. It demonstrates how to read a properties file that is stored in the jar file. This is useful only if this information cannot change. Rather than use new I.O. to get an input stream, we use the methods of the class object that are available in every instantiated object. We check to see if the resource exists in the jar and then we get the resource as a stream. The code to retrieve the name properties into the bean are the same as in the previous methods. Remember, this is read only. There you have it, how to work with a properties file. There is a sample project available on GitLab, and you can see its URL here. Thanks for listening, and look for my next screencast on resource bundles.